Welcome everyone to mini lecture series number one. Today we are going to cover transit signal priority, also known as TSP. The goal of these mini series is to provide you some basic information as efficiently as possible. If I'm going too fast, you can always stop and play back. This will be a refresher for those who are knowledgeable about the subject. And perhaps you can learn something new on the way. If you are completely new to the subject, this will be a great introduction. So, here we go. I will first explain what TSP is, then talk about how the benefits are calculated both in travel time and reliability. Don't worry, I will explain why these two are important. We will then briefly cover how TSP could impact other traffic operations. Finally, we will touch base on the infrastructure requirements of TSP. This last topic is pretty vast because there are many different systems out there. So we will cover it as much as possible for an introductory lecture. Alright, so let's start by defining what TSP is. Basically, transit signal priority, also known as TSPs, holding the green light for a few more seconds so that the bus or tram or whatever the street transit vehicle might be could clear the intersection without delay. It could also mean shortening the red light if the vehicle were to arrive while it's red. The former is known as green extension, as shown here, and the latter is known as early green or red truncation. These are the two conventional tactics for priority. There could be other ways to accommodate transit through an intersection in a delayless way. These could include phase rotation or phase insertion. The principle is always the same. How can we reduce the transit delay by actively manipulating the traffic control system? Providing priority transit vehicles will reduce their travel time. But what about an early vehicle? Do we want to speed up an early bus and make it even earlier? Not typically, so we would only like to give priority to late vehicles. However, this requires an additional level of complexity. Now the system needs to be smart to determine which vehicle gets priority. This criteria could also be based on how many people are on the vehicle or based on the direction. The best tool to estimate transit signal priority benefits is a traffic microsimulation model. These models can use an actual signal controller through a hardware in the loop system or emulate the signal controller in a virtual environment. The advantage is to understand how the TSP parameters will work in real life and how the controller will respond to a call to see the, um, how it actually recovers from an interruption. Other advantages are the ability to observe interactions between intersections and how existing progression is impacted. Furthermore, reliability benefits can only be obtained using simulation. However, the downside is building these models requires many hours of labor. Therefore, they are expensive and generally you only want to get an idea of what the benefits might be anyway. Where they could work the best, which locations would make the most sense. This type of analysis can be done at a planning level through a deterministic model. The deterministic models are, first of all, they are easy to build and understand. And uh, research actually shows close correlation between deterministic models and simulation. However, there is no signal-to-signal -signal interaction or any reliability benefits that you can obtain from these deterministic models. So those are some of the downsides. Here's an example of a deterministic tool for TSP. This is actually an output of the transit analyzer model. Let's start with the green region here to the left, right here. This region shows the green extension benefit region. As you see, if the bus were to arrive at the intersection right at the beginning of red, 
it would experience delay that is equal to R, the red time. And in this case, in this particular example, it's 50 seconds. The delay would be less and less if the bus would arrive later than that. At some point, the light turns green and the queue starts discharging. And once the queue clears, the delay would be zero, zero as the bus would arrive during green and without any queues blocking it, which is this point right here. Of course, we are assuming there is not a transit stop at this location, or if, the, if there is, it is located at the far side of the intersection so that it doesn't interfere with the TSB operations. What I just described was the outer delay line right right here versus the arrival time in the cycle of the traffic light. The slope is a function of saturation flow rate and the bus lane volume. This is a very simplistic delay model. So let's assume that we extend the green for 10 seconds so the bus could clear the intersection without getting caught at red. This would benefit the green region, the first few seconds that would otherwise be red. Observe that the delay savings are highest in this region, but also look that it's a, it's a narrow area. As a matter of fact, 10 seconds out of a 100 second cycle length would give you t about a 10% chance of arrival in this region. So when you implement green extension only, know that the chances of activating a call is pretty slim. The red region shows the benefit obtained through red truncation. As you can see, the benefit applies to the whole length of red time. However, the benefit itself is small and equal to the amount of truncation, in this case also 10 seconds. Combined green extension and red truncation in this particular example there are over 50% delay savings as observed by the area of the bigger triangle and the triangle with the white background only. Here are two examples of green extension and red truncation applied separately. It's exactly the same as the prior example what we just separated the two out. This shows the two regions and individual benefits that could be obtained from each. It is the same as the previous slide, but I thought it would be nice to see the region separately to visualize the dynamics of green extension and its big savings but small probability versus red truncation and, and its small but consistent savings through the red period. This graphic shows how the actual simulation model results compared to the deterministic model results for an isolated intersection. As you can see, there is a fairly good fit between the two methods for various congestion levels and scenarios. Therefore, the deterministic models could be used as a planning level estimate instead of simulation models. As intersection gets more congested, the other parts of the HCM delay, highway capacity manual delay, becomes more pronounced, like the incremental delay, as you can see here in these areas. So the deterministic model slightly overestimates benefits compared to VSIM. However, the difference does not appear to cause any concern for a planning level analysis. So what can we expect to gain in terms of delay savings per intersection with typical tactics and parameters? With 10 seconds of extension only and 10 seconds of red truncation, and on the right, more aggressive 15 second parameters. As expected, the more congested a bus approach is, and here is the bus V over C ratio on top, the higher the savings would be. The graphics show this clearly. Savings around 8 seconds is possible, with 10 seconds of green extension only. When combined with red truncation, savings can be as high as 12 seconds. This is the range of expected, benefit, expected benefits from TSB. It is not always possible to find 15 seconds of slack in a cycle, especially in a downtown environment. 
However, it is possible under certain situations. In that case, savings are even more, obviously. The important issue here is to implement TSP on a corridor basis where you have 30 to 50 signals or more. Therefore, the savings add up to make um, a big difference. So in terms of reliability, you know, we talked about the average savings, delay savings at an intersection, but what are what are the reliability benefits of TSP? We mentioned that conditional priority, which means giving priority to late buses and withholding priority from early buses, can help with the on-time performance. In order to understand this, let's review the mechanics of bus operations. Here we have the scheduled run times with timestamps for each stop. Then you have the reality. These are the actual run times for the 8 o'clock bus and 8.06 bus. For whatever reason, the 8 a.m. bus runs faster than scheduled, as you can see here. And this actually means that it would leave passengers behind for the 8.06 bus, which then gets later and later because it is picking up what the prior bus did not. This will affect the subsequent bus and likely it will run early because the late bus that was prior picked up all the passengers it was supposed to. In the end you end up with a bell-shaped curve of bus run times. Most of which are centered around the mean but you also have some early buses and you also have some late buses. So let's look at this example here where we talk about the fleet size and how TSP could actually help with the savings at an actual bus basis. First of all, cycle time is equal to run time plus a little bit of a recovery time at the end to compensate for these late buses as I mentioned earlier. And run time is typically the average run time which is mu. Slack time is about two standard deviations of, of the all run times so that about 95% of the buses can start on time for the next trip. And that's where the standard deviation comes into the picture. So in this particular example you have um, 100 minutes from A to B and about 80 minutes from B to A. So the total cycle time is 100 plus 80 plus 30 minutes of slack time which is as we discussed earlier which is about two standard deviations so we have a total of 210 minutes with a head headway of six minutes you end up getting 35 buses and we are assuming no spares at this point please note that absolute TSP decreases the mu the average time but conditional TSP also decreases the sigma, the standard deviation. So say TSP decreases mu by 10 minutes and sigma by 10 minutes. So now my fleet size becomes 210 minus the reduction in mu minus two times the reduction in standard deviation. Now I end up getting 30 buses. So I saved literally five buses because I implemented transit signal priority and these are actual dollars and operation cost savings. Here's an actual simulation based results of reliability benefits with and without TSP and with dif different lateness, lateness levels. As seen even with conditional priority it is important to set up the optimal schedules or lateness because it makes a huge difference. The optimal schedule is somewhere between the runs with, with and without priority. So here the example here is you have run times plus standard deviation without any priority. Here is the run time and the standard deviation with absolute priority meaning that you give priority to all buses including the early ones. And the following are some 
conditional priority schemes with different levels of lateness built into the model. So you can actually see that there's an optimal point uh, among these and the standard deviation can get significantly low um, and the means are not too bad away or too far away from absolute priority. So in this case, or the optimal schedule, this research showed was, um, you know, let's assume that you run to point B in five minutes without TSB. And with TSB, you run to the same point in four minutes. The optimal schedule should be set to running 4.5 minutes to B. So any bus that runs slower than four and a half minutes will get priority. This gives the best push-pull control, but it requires you to know run times with and without absolute priority. This is where you can use some planning level TSP benefit estimates to develop your schedules. Okay, we talked about the benefits of TSP. Let's review the traffic impacts. For the main line, the key is getting back to coordination if TSP somehow disrupts this. Other than that, green extension or red truncation help the vehicles as well as transit. Side street, however, gets affected. Let's review this example as to how to estimate TSP traffic impacts of TSB. So as we first look at the bus headway, let's assume that it's 10 minutes. So with that, the frequency of the TSB request with absolute priority, of course, assuming that every bus will get priority, will be 60 minutes divided by 10. So there will be six TSP calls in one direction per hour. With a signal cycle length of 100 seconds, we have 36 cycles in an hour. So that would give us 30 cycles of regular delay and six cycles of TSP delay. So let's, let's say that we take this synchro delay without TSP at the intersection is 42 seconds. Then we adjust the synchro splits to mimic TSP, which is basically, we let's say we extend the bus phase by about 10 seconds. And then we obtain a new synchro delay. And let's say that shows us 50 seconds. What we end up doing is a weighted average delay of 42 seconds of regular cycle length cycle and a 50 seconds of increased delay for six cycles of TSB divided by 36, so we get about 43.3 seconds. So, you know, in this example, these are just kind of numbers, but what we always find is typically there are minor traffic effects. And if you assume conditional priority, you'll even have less disruptions because you won't give priority to every bus, but just a late bus. All right, so let's review what is required to implement a conditional priority system. What are the infrastructure requirements? So the key features are, one, detecting the vehicle, two, figuring out if the bus is late or not, and three, making the change in the signal system. This is the basic principle of how TSB works there should be a seamless exchange of information for effective operation. One of the critical aspects of vehicle detection is the fact that you might have to add another antenna on the bus um, next to the AVL or the fare box system. Ideally, the AVL system should come equipped with the ability to generate, to generate a priority call based on location and schedule. Unfortunately, they are not designed to do that. So you may need to rep replicate some software and hardware to generate this call. This TSP call could be communicated over a radio channel to the signal controller or to a centralized system with the bus ID, priority status, or other relevant information. So within the accuracy of the G GPS, the call is generated at a predetermined distance from the intersection. This call can be communicated in various ways besides radio. A hard-coded RFID receiver in the pavement or by the, by the curb um, can read bus information. 
or an optical emitter could start sending an optical signal with data to a receiver on the signal pole. As you can see, there are mul multiple ways to communicate this information. Some of you may be wondering, how, how can this be so complicated at the age of Wi-Fi and social media? And you are right to wonder that. Unfortunately, we are still 10 years away from a true connected vehicle environment. But there is little question if we will get there. Regarding conditional priority, it could be either the bus that determines if it's late or not, or it could be a central system. Finally, the signal system can be decentralized or centralized. The software and hardware are critical pieces to determine what priority tactics you can use and what recovery algorithm uh, you can implement. Here's a sa sample um, detection distance discussion I wanted to share with you. Um, basically, you know, we're talking about how far back from the traffic uh, or stop bar we should place the call so that we can use full advantage of green extension. And it's, it's a basic calculation. You multiply the bus speed with the green extension time to find that distance. So in this case, let's say you have a you have a bus that goes that approaches the light with 15 miles an hour then your distance will be 22 feet per second times 10 seconds of green extension time so you basically activate the call 220 um, feet back from the stop bar right here in this particular example So we talked about conditional priority and that brought us the idea of smart bus. And what is what is smart bus and how can we do this? First of all, the driver needs to input bus information at the beginning so that the bus knows which route and what schedule. This is also known as the AVL system, but um, similar to that, the priority calls will use the same system basically and this is needed. Onboard computer inter interpolates schedules between time points and determines if the bus is late or not at any given point along the route. So you need to have the ability to do this. Because your bus stops or your um, uh, traffic lights do not necessarily coincide with your time points. If late, it generates a call typically through another onboard device that is linked to the AVL system. And the call can be any message as simple as 0 or 1 or as complex as the bus ID, direction, how many passengers are on the bus, lateness, and this can be transmitted via text message, Wi-Fi, radio communication, or through an optical signal. The, the point is you need to communicate some information to the system so that you can uh, detect the bus. In a centralized system, you probably only need the bus ID and then you compare that bus ID to all the other stored information you have on the central system like the schedule. So this kind of wraps up our uh, overall presentation. I just had a few points for general discussion purposes at the end. Um, these are some of the questions you might still be wondering or some of the highlights um, but you know given the time constraints of this presentation um, I couldn't cover all of the aspects of TSP but uh, this should give you a pretty basic idea of what what it is how the benefits are estimated what traffic impacts you might expect and what infrastructure you might need um, so basically, far side stops work the best with TSB. Um, so bus stop relocations should be done prior to the implementation of TSB. And as a matter of fact, the savings from stop relocation can be just as much, if not more, than TSB benefits themselves. So transit agencies are strongly encouraged to move their near side stops to far side stops if they can. Um, system architecture consists of several pieces that need to work seamlessly, both on the transit agency and the signal control side. 
it is important to find a lead engineer that has experience with both systems it's very important and it's also very important to find or um, to create a group of experts from both agencies um, from the transit side and the signal control side and to make sure that they work together as a team and they understand the perspectives and what's needed from both sides reliability impro improvements may easily be the biggest benefit and conditional priority is much more complicated and finally downtown environments may not have any slack in the signal splits because pedestrian times may be the determining factor for cycle lengths in case of a slack pedestrian times should have a minimum walk plus some variable walk and the flashing down walk components where you can actually take that variable walk piece and use as the slack time that you either steal to extend or truncate um, extend the green or truncate the red time and as I mentioned earlier you might have to change the cycle lengths overall to add this additional slack if there isn't any and that's not necessarily the best thing to do um, because those additional seconds in the cycle length may not be an optimal scheme for the whole system so you need to do some analysis prior to any implementation thank you very much for listening to my presentation you can contact me at transitanalyzer01 at gmail.com you can also check out the the software at transitanalyzer.weebly.com um, if you have any questions or comments please use the comment boxes below I would really appreciate um, seeing what your thoughts are and if you have any questions I'll try to answer them myself um, and thanks again for your attention All right. Bye.